man, fourth graders, I never knew how hard these archaeologists and scientists had it when they are searching for something. It is exhausting work. They're cleaning things off. They're hitting things and breaking them. Man, it is tough. I'm so glad that you came back today, fourth graders, and you are with us. My name is Mrs. Lawson, and we are starting a new book today all about what we've been talking about so far. And let's show what it is. It is called King of the Parking Lot. What in the world could that mean if he's the king of the parking lot? Hmm, can't wait to see what that is about. Now let's look at this picture. This must be our king. And does it look like someone who's alive today, maybe? I don't know, I can't wait to hear what you're thinking about and what predictions you're making because good readers are always thinking ahead. Now, I just wanted to show you, this is obviously a map of our world and we're over here in the United States. Now this story actually takes place where this little star is right here over in England where there are kings and queens. So it just shows you, you know, the story is taking place a little ways away. So we're gonna learn some new things today. Our learning intention. We're learning to use details to understand and be able to explain the author's sources, evidence, and their ideas. We know we are successful when we can use evidence and details from the text to explain what the text says, which we've done a lot of. So just going back in that text, and then tell where in the text the evidence can be found. So today for our foundational skills, we're gonna look at the prefixes un and in. And we know if we add those to the beginning of a word, it changes the meaning. So if we're starting off with the word selfish, if you're being selfish, who are you thinking about? You're thinking about yourself. So I'd put my needs before others' needs. Now what if we said you're being unselfish? then who are you thinking about? It changes the meaning, right? So you're not thinking about yourself anymore, you're thinking of others. So that's an example of un. Now what about ability? If you have the ability to play soccer, it's something you can do, right? What if I change it to inability to play soccer? It means it's something you're not really good at, right? So there's two examples of un and in. They have the same job. They're both changing that meaning of the word. So for your foundational skill practice today, you are gonna have this passage, Digging for Diamonds. And you'll see it fits our theme that we're working on. And it is working with prefixes un and in. And there are a few words there that might be tricky. Just take your time, really work on getting those right as you read your passage. You might be recording yourself on Seesaw, or you might be just doing this um, on your own time. Vocabulary, my favorite. So let's look and see if you can figure out what this word means without me showing you. Portray. So paintings created after his death portray him with narrowed eyes, a hunched back, and even clawed fingers. So portrays him in a way. Now this is Patrick Mahomes. You probably know who he is. That's what he looks like. Now underneath, I have a picture portraying him in a different way. It's portraying him kind of intimidating, right? He's big, got those strong arms really out there. It's kind of scary looking. So what would portray mean? Let's see if you're right. Portray is the way person is shown in art. So even though Patrick Mahomes looks like that in, in real life, they might make him look a different way in pictures. What about that archeologist that I was talking about earlier? I said, those archeologists have it hard. So down below is from the text, it says she hired archeologists and scientists who found an old map of Leicester. And in that picture, we've got somebody digging. What do you think it means? Well, an archeologist is a scientist who studies the past by digging up and analyzing human remains and objects. I still think that would be such a cool job. All right, so let's hop into this story. One of my favorites, can't wait for you to learn about it. Philippa Langley is a woman on a mission. 
As a modern day screenwriter and history fan, Philippa's favorite topic to study is Richard III, one of the most famous kings in England's history. This legendary king who died over 500 years ago had quite the bad reputation. After his brief two year reign and death in 1485, he is remembered for being cru a cruel killer. William Shakespeare wrote a play about him in 1592 titled Richard III and described him as a cold-hearted, selfish villain. Oh. Paintings created after his death portrayed him with narrowed eyes, a hunched back, and even clawed fingers. All right, so let's look. He's kind of got that claw, like that hunchback right there. Don't see any clawed fingers or narrowed eyes though, but he's kind of hunching over. Ooh, we got that stop sign. It says, what does Philippa hope to do? So what is her goal? But Philippa knew that every story has two sides. Had Richard III really been the bad guy everyone said? Or did the following rulers of England just make him seem that way to make themselves look good? Could Philippa possibly find his missing remains and even clues about the king's real personality so long after his death? Many experts said that locating him would be impossible, but Philippa had a dream to find the lost king. So, Surface level, like if you're just thinking, what does she want to do? She obviously wants to find his remains, but we want to dig deeper. Why does she want to find those remains? Yeah, she wants to find those remains to show what was he really like? Is what everyone was saying true or is there more to that story? She wants to get to know his real personality. So this is a portrait of King Richard III. Lost and found. Modern scientists can tell a lot about people who lived long ago by studying their remains. However, there was no body or skeleton of Richard III anywhere to be found. Some records said he was buried at the Greyfriars Church in Leicester, England, after he died at the ba Battle of Bosworth in 1485. However, some said that his body was removed and thrown into the river sore after King Henry VII tore down Greyfriars Church. Whoa. Okay, so this map kind of helps us up here because we can see that Leicester is in England and it's kind of near London, if you've ever heard of London, England, and it just shows us where it is they're talking about. Philippa Langley is a member of the Richard III Society. This group studies everything about King Richard III. They believed he might still be buried at the site of that old church. But where exactly was that? If Philippa could locate where the church used to be, she could dig and hopefully locate his missing buried bones. Oh boy. Philippa raised money and got a license to start an excavation to dig. She hired archaeologists and scientists who found an old map of Leicester. This map showed a possible location of the Greyfriars Church. They laid the old map on top of a current map of Leicester and discovered something. The old church used to sit in an area that was now a parking lot between two office buildings. Could the king still be there after all these years? On September 8th, 2012, Philippa and her team began digging to find out. So this must be the parking lot. Oh boy, we got a skeleton. What? That's it? Oh, I wanted to know what happened. All right. So what we want to start out with is what the skill is we're working on is we're going to go back and find information. So, we already talked about how Philippa Langley wanted to find King Richard III's remains. Now we want to figure out what things she did to accomplish this. So, what steps did she take to find his remains? Now, the first one stuck out to me here. 
down in this paragraph. It says, Philippa Langley is a member of King Richard III Society. This group studies everything about King Richard III, and then she got information from them. So the first thing that popped out to me is she turned to the King Richard III Society and got some information because that helped her later on. So make sure you're doing this with me with a piece of paper and a pencil. Get this written down and pause this video if you need to, but we're going to keep trucking along. Then the other thing that popped out to me is on this page. It says she raised money and got a license to start the excavation to dig. She hired archaeologists and scientists who found an old map of Leicester. So the next thing that popped out to me is that she hired these archaeologists and scientists who kind of figured out where to dig. Now for this last one, I want you to go to that page we were just on and try and find another Thing that she did. So you're going to pause the video here and see if you can find another action that she took to make her goal become a reality. All right, now what evidence does the author give about Philippa Langley's personality as a researcher? Cite evidence from the text. So I went back in the text and I kind of grabbed some pieces that stuck out to me. So remember, when they ask about someone's personality, we're kind of making an inference. We're taking what they say and we're saying, this is what the person is like. So the first thing that stuck out to me was that she was a history fan right here. So that tells us a little bit about her motivation. She wanted to figure out about King Richard III because she loves history. Another thing that popped out to me was down at the bottom down here. Anything tell you about Philippa down here that sticks out to you? Hopefully, it was that first line. It says, every story has two sides. So everybody's saying he's this evil guy, but there must be another side to that story. It tells me Philippa's fair. She wants to learn the truth, not just one side. Now, the other thing I learned is up at the top in a heading, actually. It says she is a woman on a mission. She is a go-getter. She's going to get this done. And that's what leads me to this last paragraph where it tells us what we just went through, all of the actions she took to make this dream become a reality. All right, guys, it's your turn for a reading response. Based on details in the text, how could Philippa learn about King Richard's, Richard III's personality more than 500 years after his death? I think that's a great question. How so long after could we learn about him and know what he was like? So get that figured out, get it written down, get your thoughts written down, and I cannot wait to hear what you find out. Thanks for working so hard today. Have a great day.